Humans possess the natural ability to maintain body orientation and posture in relation to their surrounding environment, whether at rest or motion. Good spatial orientation is due to effective perception and interpretation of your senses, visual, vestibular, proprioceptive, and auditory information. Two modules will be used to discuss how your body maintains spatial orientation. This module will focus on the vestibular and proprioceptive systems. The second module will discuss the visual system. Under certain conditions, your flight environment can create sensory conflicts and illusions that make orientation difficult and in some cases impossible to achieve. Spatial disorientation is the loss of your orientation in relation to the Earth's surface caused mainly by a lack of and or misinterpretation of visual, vestibular or proprioceptive sensory inputs to the brain. Spatial orientation during flight requires an understanding of your sensory organs and knowing how you can compensate for their limitations. Visual references provide the dominant sensory information to maintain spatial orientation. This is especially true when your body and or environment are in motion. Changes in linear, angular or gravitational acceleration are detected by the vestibular system. Information gathered is mentally compared to the visual information being received. When flying your aircraft in instrument conditions without outside visual information available, the aircraft flight instruments are the only means to confirm your aircraft position. Under these conditions, vestibular system can give false illusions. The vestibular system is located in the inner ear. This system is the size of a pencil eraser and contains two distinct structures, the semicircular canals and the otolith organs. The semicircular canals detect changes in angular acceleration, while the otolith organs detect changes in linear acceleration. Both of these provide information regarding your body's position and movement relative to Earth. Three half-circular interconnected tubes inside each ear comprise the semicircular canals. The semicircular canals of both inner ears monitor angular acceleration and sense rotation in three dimensions. The planes of the three canals in each ear correspond to the roll, pitch, or yaw motions of an aircraft. Each canal is filled with a thick fluid and contains hair cells. The hair cells move as the fluid moves inside the canal. The fluid moves in response to angular acceleration. The movement of the hair cells is similar to the movement of seaweed caused by ocean current. If your head is kept still, and the airplane is flying straight and level, the fluid in the canals will not move and the hair cells will remain erect. This signals your brain that there is no rotational acceleration and can be confirmed either visually or by instruments. The somatogyral illusions concerns false sensations about the magnitude and or false perception of rotation in its actual absence. The graveyard spiral and spin due to somatogyral illusions are two of the oldest in aviation. The semicircular canal is activated when you accelerate rapidly into a turn, in this case a left turn. The fluid within the semicircular canal lags behind the accelerated canal walls and bends the hair cells to the right or in the direction opposite that of the imposed acceleration. The brain interprets the movement of the hair cells to the right as angular movement to the left. If the turn continues at a constant rate for several seconds or longer, the motion of fluid catches up with the canal walls, the hair cells are no longer bent, and the brain receives the completely false impression that turning has stopped. When you return to level flight, the fluid inside the canal will continue to move during the rollout and even for a while after the turn stops. This will send a signal to the brain indicating that you are turning in the opposite direction, an illusion. You can observe this reaction by using a barony chair to simulate a constant rate turn. Blindfold or place goggles on a pilot to deprive the subject of visual cues and secure them in the barony chair. 
The subject is then told to indicate the rotation of turn by using thumb signals. As the rotation begins, the subject is aware of the movement. but will gradually lose the turning sensation as the fluid catches up to the rotation. As the chair is brought to a sudden stop, the canal fluid continues to move for a short period of time and the hair cells are bent to the left. This gives the subject the illusion of turning opposite the original direction. If this sensory illusion is believed, you may try to counteract it by inappropriately turning the aircraft in the original direction. Now, let's examine some other in-flight illusions that are caused by the semicircular canals. The leans is the most common sensory illusion related to stimulation of the semicircular canals. The leans can be caused by two different circumstances while flying instruments without outside references. Remember this, it is possible for you to be unaware of a gradual turn of the aircraft because human exposure to a rotational acceleration of two degrees per second squared or less is below the detection threshold of the semicircular canals. The first scenario is when the aircraft tips to one side quickly enough for you to detect the movement and you smoothly return the aircraft to straight and level below the detection threshold of the semicircular canals. You may sense the aircraft is still tilted to that side. The sensation will be so convincing that you will actually lean away from the perceived tilting even though the instruments read straight and level. The opposite may occur causing the second scenario. You become aware of a gradual or prolonged turn of the aircraft that went unnoticed and take abrupt corrective action to level the aircraft the illusion of banking in the opposite direction can occur and you may lean in order to align yourself with the supposed axis of the aircraft. In both cases, trust your attitude indicator. Maintain aircraft control even though you retain the false perception of bank. The Coriolis illusion is probably the most dangerous of the vestibular illusions. This illusion involves the simultaneous stimulation of two or more semicircular canals in each ear, as is associated with a sudden tilting of your head, forward or backwards or to the side, while the aircraft is turning. This can occur when you tilt your head down to look at an approach chart or to write a note on your knee pad, or tilt it up to look at an overhead instrument or switch. This produces a very incapacitating sensation that the aircraft is rolling, pitching, and yawing all at the same time. This very uncomfortable illusion can make you become airsick or may result in losing control of the aircraft. To prevent this reaction, avoid sudden extreme head movements while making turns. The otolith organs are located in each ear at the base of the semicircular canals. The otoliths detect changes in linear acceleration in the horizontal plane and changes in the position of the head in relation to gravitational forces. Their structure consists of small sacs covered by hair cell filaments. These filaments project into an overlying gelatinous membrane tipped by tiny calcium stones. Let's observe this organ and how it operates. The sensory hairs will deflect with a change in your head position due to gravity acting upon them. So when you tilt your head, the resting frequency is altered and the brain is informed of your new head position in relation to the vertical plane. The biggest problem occurs when there is exposure to linear acceleration, such as during takeoff or landing. During takeoff with sufficient forward linear acceleration, the fluid will flow over the otoliths and send a signal to the brain inducing a false sensation of over rotation. This illusion would tell you to push forward with the controls regardless of aircraft attitude. This would cause the aircraft to nose over and possibly crash. Another sensory input that plays a role in maintaining spatial orientation comes from the proprioceptors located in the skin, muscles, tendons, and joints. Proprioceptors provide information about body position and movements. 
By sensing points of physical contact between body parts and the surrounding environment, the proprioceptors make it possible for you to know your relative posture. These sensations provide the seat of the pants sense, often referred to in flying. However, they alone will not let you differentiate between flying straight and level and performing a coordinated turn. Hearing does not create any significant role in illusions and plays a minor role in spatial orientation. The visual and vestibular systems play a dominant role in spatial orientation and override the small inputs of the proprioceptive and auditory systems. The best way to protect against spatial disorientation is to educate yourself about the sensory illusions and recognize your limits as a pilot. Take the opportunity to personally experience sensory illusions in a barony chair, a gyro, or a virtual reality spatial disorientation demonstrator. By experiencing sensory illusions firsthand, on the ground, pilots are better prepared to recognize a sensory illusion when it happens during flight. The Aeromedical Education Division of the FAA Civil Aeromedical Institute offers spatial disorientation demonstrations with the gyro and the virtual reality spatial disorientation demonstrator in Oklahoma City. CAMI also makes these machines available at major air shows in the continental United States. Spatial disorientation is a killer. By following a few precautions, you can prevent or cope with this problem of disorientation. Obtain a thorough weather briefing. Correct interpretation of the briefing. The benefit of 180 degree turn before entering IFR conditions. If you find yourself in instrument conditions, concentrate on flying basic instruments and disregard your body sensations. Concentrate on your instruments. Remove yourself from the peripheral vision environment and its cues and distractions. Increase instrument cross-check rate. Ask ATC for help as soon as you recognize a problem. While under instrument conditions, avoid head movements during turns. Use your eyes rather than your head. Defer non-essential tasks. Concentrate on flying the aircraft. If you are one of two pilots in an aircraft and you begin to experience a sensory illusion, transfer control of the aircraft to the other pilot. It is seldom that pilots experience sensory illusions at the same time. If an autopilot is available, use it until the sensory illusion dissipates. By being knowledgeable, relying on experience, and trusting your instruments, you will be contributing to keeping the skies safe for everyone. Spatial disorientation is the loss of your orientation in relation to the Earth's surface, caused mainly by a lack of and or misinterpretation of visual, vestibular, or proprioceptive sensory inputs to the brain. Visual references provide the dominant sensory information to maintain spatial orientation. Changes in linear, angular, or gravitational acceleration are detected by the vestibular system. The inner ear contains the vestibular system. This system is the size of a pencil eraser and contains two distinct structures, the semicircular canals and the otolith organs. The semicircular canals of both inner ears monitor angular acceleration and sense rotation in three dimensions. The planes of the three canals in each ear correspond to the roll, pitch, or yaw motions of an aircraft. The somatogyral illusions concerns false sensations about the magnitude and or false perception of rotation in its actual absence. The graveyard spiral and spin, due to somatogyral illusions, are two of the oldest in aviation. The leans is the most common sensory illusion related to stimulation of the semicircular canals. The Coriolis illusion involves the simultaneous stimulation of two or more semicircular canals in each ear and is associated with a sudden tilting of your head forward or backwards or to the side while the aircraft is turning. 
The otoliths detect changes in linear acceleration in the horizontal plane and changes in the position of the head in relation to gravitational forces. Another sensory input that plays a role in maintaining spatial orientation comes from the proprioceptors located in the skin, muscles, tendons, and joints. Proprioceptors provide information about body position and movements. Hearing does not create any significant role in illusions and plays a minor role in spatial orientation. The dominant role that the visual and vestibular systems play in spatial orientation override the small inputs of the proprioceptive and auditory systems. The best way to protect against spatial disorientation is to educate yourself about sensory illusions. Recognize your limits as a pilot. Obtain a pilot instrument rating. Stay current. Trust your instruments. Spatial disorientation is a killer. By being knowledgeable and trusting your instruments, you'll be contributing to keeping the skies safe for everyone. This module will focus on visual illusions that could cause spatial disorientation Spatial disorientation is the loss of your orientation in relation to the Earth's surface caused by a lack of visual, vestibular, or proprioceptive sensory inputs to the brain, or by misinterpretation of these inputs. Of all of the senses of the human body, vision is your most important sense in obtaining reference information. During flight, it is also the most dominant. Reviewing the module Vision in Aviation, To See or Not to See, will aid in your understanding of the concepts discussed in this module. Do you realize that even though you may have perfect vision, you may not be seeing the whole picture? Visual perception involves your eyes, brain, and balance mechanism. The balance mechanism and its vestibular and proprioceptive components were discussed in the first module on spatial disorientation. The function of the eyes includes central and peripheral vision. Central vision, also known as foveal vision, involves the identification of objects and the perception of colors. It is a one to three degree cone which, during instrument flight conditions, allows you to acquire information from the flight instruments that your brain processes to provide spatial orientation. During visual flight conditions, central vision allows you to acquire external information to judge distance, speed, and depth. Peripheral vision is approximately 82 degrees on either side of the central vision field. Peripheral vision also known as ambient vision, is involved with perception of motion and attitude cues and provides peripheral reference cues to maintain spatial orientation. This visual capability enables orientation independent from central vision, which is why we can walk straight while reading. An understanding of how the brain processes sensory information is important so you can recognize and correct spatial disorientation if it occurs. Information from peripheral vision, vestibular signals, and proprioceptors are acquired and processed subconsciously. This process is very rapid. Information from central vision is acquired and processed through a conscious process. This process is much slower. This is a factor in your instrument cross-check for feedback on your status in flight. If you are an experienced and current instrument pilot, you will use your central vision to concentrate on the flight instruments, to override false illusions, and to maintain aircraft control. This skill takes practice, discipline, and concentration. What you have experienced, what you expect to see, and the sensory inputs you are receiving all influence perception. Which woman do you see here in this picture? There are two an old one and a young one. Once you focus on one, it is difficult to transition to the other unless certain cues are removed. 
The flight attitude of an airplane is generally determined by the pilot's visual reference to the natural horizon. When the natural horizon is obscured, attitude can sometimes be maintained by reference to the surface of the Earth below. If neither horizon nor surface references exist, the airplane's attitude can only be determined by artificial means, such as an attitude indicator or other flight instruments. Earth surface references, or the natural horizon, may at times become obscured by smoke, fog, haze, dust, ice particles, or other phenomena, even if visibility is at or above VFR minimums. Lack of horizon, or Earth surface reference, is common on overwater flights, at night, or in low visibility conditions. This lack is especially true at airports located adjacent to large bodies of water or to sparsely populated areas where few, if any, Earth surface references are available. There are some geometric shapes that cause you to have visual illusions in your aircraft. These geometric shapes, associated with aircraft movement, can affect your distance and depth perception. Which lines are the same length? Are the thin lines parallel to each other or crooked? How much longer is line A than line B? Which side of this cube is in the front and which is in the back? It depends on whether you look at A or the B. Many visual illusions can occur and cause you problems during the takeoff and landing phases of flight. You learn to recognize a normal final approach by developing and recalling a mental image of the expected relationship between the length and the width of an average runway, surrounding terrain, and geometric shapes. Some factors that can create landing illusions are runway width and or length, runway slope, surrounding terrain, fog and haze, smooth solid surfaces, runway lighting. A final approach over flat terrain with an upsloping runway may produce a visual illusion of being high on final approach. If you believe this illusion, you may respond by pitching the aircraft nose down to decrease your glide path, which, if performed too close to the ground, may result in an accident. A final approach over flat terrain with a downsloping runway may produce the visual illusion of being low on final approach. If you believe this illusion, you may respond by pulling the nose up to increase the glide path. This action may result in a low altitude stall or missed approach. With an upsloping terrain with a flat runway, you may have an illusion of being low on final approach. If you believe the illusion, you may respond by pulling the nose up to increase the glide path, which may result in a low altitude stall or a missed approach. A final approach over a downsloping terrain with a flat runway may produce the visual illusion of being high on final approach. If believed, you may respond by pitching the aircraft nose down to decrease the glide path, which, if performed too close to the ground, may result in an accident. Runways with varying widths and lengths are another source of illusions that may affect your perceived glide path. An approach to an unusually narrow or long runway may produce the visual illusion of being high on final approach. If believed, you may respond by pitching the aircraft nose down to decrease your glide path, which, if performed too close to the ground, may result in an accident. An approach to an unusually wide runway may produce the opposite illusion of being low on final approach. If believed, you may respond by pitching the aircraft nose up to increase glide path, which may result in a low altitude stall or a missed approach. Depth perception can also be a problem due to runway width 
and length. If you have been landing on a narrow runway and then shoot an approach to a wide runway, be aware. Your peripheral vision cues may not properly determine the height above the runway during the final part of your approach and flare. The possibility will exist for a hard landing. If your experience is landing on a wide runway and you shoot an approach to a narrow runway, the possibility exists for you to flare too high and have no airspeed. Night flying has illusions also. A final approach during a dark night with no stars or moonlight, with no lights before the runway, and city lights or rising terrain beyond the runway is known as a black hole approach. An approach under these conditions may produce a visual illusion of being too high on the glide path. If you believe this illusion, you may respond by pushing the aircraft nose down to decrease the glide path. This action could cause you to land short of the runway. Autokinetic illusion gives you the impression that a stationary object is moving in front of the airplane's path. This is caused by staring at a fixed single point of light, such as a ground light or a star, in a totally dark and featureless background. The illusion can cause you to have a misperception that such a light is another aircraft on a collision course with you. The false visual reference illusion may cause you to orient your aircraft in relation to a false horizon. This illusion is caused by flying over a banked cloud, night flying over featureless terrain with ground lights that are indistinguishable from a dark sky with stars, night flying over a featureless terrain with a clearly defined pattern of ground lights and a dark starless sky. In addition, Problems can be caused during landing by a lack of visual depth and texture caused by blowing dust and snow, fog and haze, over water approaches. Time of day and lighting conditions can mask terrain features of rolling hills and mountains. You should be aware of the minimum safe altitude for the terrain for your flight path. In this module, you have seen how the eyes can be fooled. How do you defeat spatial disorientation and protect yourself against these illusions? Realize that you are vulnerable to sensory illusions. Obtain an instrument rating and maintain your proficiency as an instrument pilot. Be aware of the times and conditions that could cause you to be subject to visual illusions and spatial disorientation. Do a pre-flight plan to reduce the need for in-flight planning. Study and be familiar with the approach charts for your destination airports. Make it a part of your cockpit management to constantly cross-check your instruments with outside visual references. If you become disoriented, here is a checklist for recovery. Concentrate on flying basic instruments. Get closer to the instruments, remove yourself from the outside environment and its peripheral vision cues and distractions. Increase your instrument cross-check rate. Defer non-essential tasks and maintain aircraft control. If circumstances dictate, communicate your situation to air traffic control. If you are an instrument rated pilot, remember, Instrument flying is a skill that erodes with time. Only the frequent use of this skill will allow you to maintain an optimum level of proficiency. Of all of the senses of the human body, vision is your most important and the most dominant sense in obtaining reference information during flight. Visual perception involves your eyes, brain, and balance mechanism. The functions of the eye include central and peripheral vision. Peripheral vision will give motion and attitude cues, but poor visual detail. Central vision tells you what the object is. 
gives you distance and depth perception and lets you see fine details. What you have experienced and what you expect to see influence perception. This is how to protect yourself against these illusions. Realize that you are vulnerable to sensory illusions. Obtain training and maintain your proficiency as an instrument pilot. Study and be familiar with the approach charts for all your destinations. If you become disoriented, concentrate on flying basic instruments. Get closer to the instruments. Remove yourself from the outside environment and its peripheral vision cues and distractions. Increase your instrument cross-check rate. Defer non-essential tasks, remember priorities, control the aircraft. Spatial disorientation is a killer. By being knowledgeable about its insidious effects and by trusting your instruments, you will be contributing to safer skies for everyone.